All right, so let's start uh, a new um, group, uh, a mediumship literature group. We are reading The Gospel According with Spiritism by Alan Kardec. Uh, today we are going to start where we finished uh, last week, uh, chapter 20, 26 from The Gospel According with Spiritism by Alan Kardec. Uh, let's do our initial prayer, and uh, we are going to, uh, we are going from there. Dear God, thank you very much for this day, for uh, this opportunity to be here together, for the lives of everyone in here. Uh, thank you for your unconditional love, despite of our uh, weaknesses, our limitations. You always. Bless us with your unconditional love, your wisdom, opportunities to grow and to help each other. Help us to understand the, the things uh, we need to learn, the things we are reading, and uh, most importantly, apply in our daily lives. And give us the strength to overcome the challenges uh, of applying those wisdoms in our daily lives. The, what, the challenges of being beams of light in our uh, through our trials, uh, and also um, the challenges of helping others around us, um, help us to overcome those tumultuous time and grow with it. Help us to become more enlightened and closer to you. Uh, because that's uh, the natural course of, uh, of life and uh, your will according with the natural laws. Thank you very much uh, for your help and uh, please um, continue with us uh, using those readings to heal us and also to heal and enlighten those that are watching us after that, after, after our recording after uh, the group. Thank you very much. Amen. All right, so chapter 26, who would like to start reading? You can go. <clears throat> chapter 26, give for free what has been received gratuitously. The gift of healing paid prayers, money changers expelled from the temple, gratuitous mediumship. Gift of healing. One, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10, 8. Give for free what has been received gratuitously, is what Jesus told his disciples. With this recommendation, it is prescribed that no one be charged for something for which nothing has been paid. Now, what they had received gratuitously was the faculty of healing those who were sick, and that of expelling devils, that is to say, bad spirits. God gave them this faculty gratis for the elevation of those who suffer and as a means of propagating faith. Jesus then recommended that they did not turn this into an object of commercialization, neither speculation nor a means of livelihood. Paid prayers. Then this is the audience of all people. He said unto his disciples, beware of the scribes, which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a shoe make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. Luke 20, 45, 47, also Mark 12, 38, 40, and Matthew 23, 14. Jesus also said, do not make charges for your prayers. Do not do as the scribes who on pretext of long prayers devoured the homes of widows. That is to say, they took possession of their fortunes. Prayer is an act of charity, an ecstasy of the heart. 
To charge someone for the prayers we direct to God in their name is to transform oneself into a paid intermediary. Then prayer becomes a mere formula whose length is in proportion to the amount it costs. Moreover, only one of the following can be true. Either God measures or does not measure his blessing by the number of words used in a prayer. If these were necessary in large numbers, why then are so few said or even none for those who cannot pay? This is a lack of charity. If one word is sufficient, then an excess of words is useless. How then can we charge for these prayers? This would be a corrupt practice. <clears throat> God does not sell his benefits. He concedes them. How then can one who is not an agent and cannot guarantee results charge for a petition which may produce no results? It is possible that God makes an act of clemency, kindness, and justice, ask for because of his infinite mercy, subject to the payment of a sum of money that if the sum were not paid or was insufficient, then the justice, kindness, and clemency would be suspended. Reason, good sense, and logic tells us it is impossible that God, who is absolute perfection, could delegate to imperfect beings the right to establish a prize for his justice, which is like the sun. It exists for all, rich and poor alike. As it is considered immoral to trade in the favors of any earthly sovereign, could it then be illicit to commercialize those of the sovereign of the universe? Yet another drawback is presented by paid prayers, which is the one who buys them judge themselves, in most cases to be relieved from the need to pray. They consider themselves exonerated since they gave their money. We know that spirits are touched by the fervor of the of of the thoughts of those who are interested in them. But what fervor can be felt by one who arranges a third party to pray for them on payment of money? What kind of fervor has this third party when he delegates his task to another and that one yet another and so on? Does this not reduce the efficiency of prayer to the value of currency? Should I stop here or keep going? Um, I think the uh, we we can continue, um, and then we can comment at all the end. Uh, unless, unless people have questions that are urgent right now. No. Okay, so that let's continue. Thank you, Patty. The money changers expelled from the temple and they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out, cast them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold those and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he thought, and he thought saying unto them, it is not written. My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayers, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Mark 11, 15, 18, and Matthew 20, 12, and 13. Jesus expelled the, march, the merchants from the temple. With this act, he condemned the trading of sacred things in any form whatsoever. God does not sell his blessings, neither his pardon, nor the right of entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, man has no right to stipulate a price on such things. Gratuitous mediumship. Mediums today, since the apostles, the apostles also possess mediumship, have equally received a faculty gratis from God. This is of being interpreters of the spirits for the instruction of mankind, to show them the pathway of goodness, conducting them along by means of faith. Not to sell words which do not belong to the mediums, 
seeing that they are not fruits of their conceptions, nor of their research, nor of their personal work. God wants the light to reach everyone. He does not want to be the poorest to be, he does not want the poorest to be deprived of it. So they can say they have no faith because they could not pay for it, nor that they did not have the consolation of receiving encouragement and testimony of affection for those who they weep for because they were too poor. This is why mediumship is not a privilege. It is to be found in all places. To make someone pay for it is to turn it away from its providential objective. Those who understand the conditions in which good spirits communicate, the feelings of repugnance they have towards everything which shows selfish interest, and know how little it takes to drive them away, could never accept that superior spirits are at the disposal of the first who comes along and evokes them at so much procession. Simple good sense rejects such an idea. Would it not be profanity to evoke for money those we respect or those who are dear to us? Beyond doubt, communications can be obtained in this manner. But who can guarantee their sincerity? Spirits are frivolous, deceitful, mocking nature, and all the bank of inferior spirits who are not all, at all scrupulous always come running ready to reply to whatever is asked with no regard for the throat. Those then who desire serious communications should before all else ask with seriousness and following this should inform themselves of the nature of the sympathies the medium may have with beings from the spirit world. Therefore, the first conditions necessary to attract the benevolence of the good spirits are humility, devotion, abnegation, and total disinterest, both moral and material. Besides the moral question, an effective consideration also presents itself, which is no less important. This refers to the actual nature of the faculty itself. Serious mediumship cannot be and never will be a profession, not just because it would be morally discredited and rapidly become mere fortune telling, but because it is material obs obstacle in opposition. Mediumship is a faculty which is essentially unstable, elusive, and variable, whose permanency no one can count upon. It is a very uncertain source for anyone wishing to exploit it and can fail at the moment it is most needed. A talent acquired by study and work is another matter and is for this reason a skill which can be legitimately used to advantage. But mediumship is neither an art nor a skill. Therefore, it cannot become a profession. It only exists through the co cooperation of the spirits. If they are absent, there is no mediumship. This, the aptitude can exist, but the exercise of it would be annulled. Also, there is not a single medium in the world who can guarantee the obtaining of a spiritual phenomenon at any given moment. So then to exploit mediumship is to make use of something which does not really belong to that person. To state the contrary is to deceive the person being charged. What is more, it is not they themselves whom the exploiter commands, but rather the concourse of spirits, the souls of the dead, whose cooperation they put a price on. This idea causes instinctive repugnance. It was the trafficking, the exploitation by charlatans that generated into abuse, ignorance, incredulity, and the superstition which motivated its prohibition by Moses. Modern spiritism, understanding the serious nature of this question, has completely discredited this exploitation. So elevating mediumship to the category of a mission. See the medium's book, second part, chapter 28, and also heaven and hell, first part, chapter 11. Mediumship is something sacred, which should be practiced in a saintly and religious manner. And if there is one type of mediumship which requires this condition even more absolutely than the others, it is that of healing. A doctor gives the fruits of his study, which were often gained at the cost of personal and 
of painful sacrifices. A magnetizer gives his own fluids, sometimes even his health. A price can be put upon these. A cure in medium, however, retransmits healing fluids from the good spirits and consequently has no right to sell them. Jesus and his apostle souls, uh, apostles, although poor, did not charge for the cures they obtained. So then, those who lack the necessary means of financial support can seek their funds wherever they like, except within mediumship. And if necessary, only dedicate their spare time to this work after material needs have been satisfied. The spirits will take into consideration the devotion and sacrifices, whereas they will turn away from those who expect to turn them into a ladder for material ascension. So in Spiritism, this is the bottom footnote. In Spiritism, the word healing is understood to mean restorative work carried out by spirits using someone, possibly a medium, as their instrument. There we go. So that's it. All right. So what uh, you have understood and what are your thoughts about what we read? I, I kind of... I kind of uh, reacted a little bit to the first part where they said that um, prayers or presents cannot be um, cannot be paid for. Like instead of of investing time in the loved ones that passed away, or that instead of doing your own prayers by yourself, paying for somebody, it just made me think of that Jewish tradition where they pay somebody to guard the corpse <laughs> until the burial right. And I just thought, wow, <laughs> there's probably something not working out. Yeah, maybe that was intended for the family and they're just paying some random dude who ends up checking his phone all night. <laughs> yeah. So and in, in, in uh, many religions, uh, including Christianity and especially Christianity and um, even mediumship nowadays in America and some other parts, like people are really, really exploiting it. Some, a lot of people are studying mediumship, joining, joining circles and classes to become a professional medium and, and, and pray. Like, I don't know if you ever go to a psychic uh, and th those are not, they, they don't intend to be religious, that's fine, but uh, I'm just giving you an example of, there are some people in church that do that, uh, when they go to a sack, they charge, which is fine, um, and they, they charge a lot of money afterwards to pray for you, to kind of, they always come up with, I, you have something against you, some kind of a course, someone it's like, uh, you know, interfering with your life, with your family, blah, blah, blah. If you pay for me, I can work for you. I can take away this negative energy. This is the same kind of idea that a lot of people do. There are churches uh, that deliberately do that. Like I went once when I was in college, there was a course uh, I forgot even the name of the course the, uh, the, in, that we had to make researches uh, about different themes um, in a community, like stuff related to homelessness or religion or anything that's related to social affect the society one way or the other. So I, I was assigned um, to research uh, one specific church, which was booming at that time, and now is like really powerful all over the world, which is called Universal Church, is is not the same uni um, Universalist Church that is in America. It, this uh, is a Universal Church, which was started in Brazil, and so this is like was in the beginning kind of the beginning of the church which was they were already really powerful like the, their temples were like palaces was huge 
So I went there to attend their worship and to, to learn how they worked and how the things were there. And uh, they had envelopes. And uh, do you know those little pockets in a, in a bench in the church? They have envelopes with like prices of different play, prayers. So if you want a prayer for just a, you know, a regular prayer is was one price. If you want a prayer for a disease, that's another price. If it's like cancer was another price. It was like marriage problems, financial problems. Each prayer has different prices, like, you know, and, and that's what they are talking about. Um, and, but again, like we can do this in many different ways, right? Uh, as long as we, uh, the, the core of this whole chapter is that prayers, mediumship, and everything that in involves spirituality is something that does not belong to us. We cannot charge for something that's not ours. If we go to school and become an attorney or a therapist or a physical therapist or a speech therapist or even a, a, a carpenter, uh, develop a, a craft, uh, you, electric, electrician, whatever you are, you, you have invested your time to learn those crafts. Uh, you have invested something. So those skills are yours, right? Only depends on you. You learn that and you can offer that, that labor, and you can charge. Yes. But what comes with mediumship and prayers, we work in straight dependency of God and the spirits. We can never, like they said, we can never guarantee that we are going to be able to communicate with certain spirits because sometimes they don't want to talk. They don't want to come. Like sometimes people come, oh, I want to talk with my, my mom or my dad who passed. Sometimes they, they come, but sometimes they don't because there are many reasons why they sometimes don't come. Sometimes they are not ready to communicate. Sometimes they are going through their own process of adjusting um there are many reasons and and then like the person paid you for for that and then what you cannot deliver so people start making making up you know things and that's not good right it's all very dishonest and 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 I'll, again is you know the spirits that's talking and our guides that are helping us, allowing us to, to, to have that communication. There's a whole team in the spiritual world that's working really hard to make that happen. Uh, whatever it is, that prayer, the answer of the prayer or the mediumship communication is a lot of people in the spiritual world working. We are just the channels. We are just the instruments. We, it doesn't belong to us. But this is very controversial, especially in, I mean, it's not just in America. I see all over the world people charging. Um, and that's why I don't charge for my classes or, uh, you know, uh, one thing is like, if you, if you are, I have seen mediums uh, living open for donations. If people are you know, want to donate for a workshop or a reading or something, that's, that's acceptable because, okay, uh, if someone wants to collaborate, it's the same thing we, we do in churches, like right? people place donations and stuff, but it's not a price, it's not a cost for something that doesn't belong to us. Um, what do you guys think? I'm with you on this one, but I'm, I'm torn like individually as a person. Like I understand that people that dedicated a lot, a lot and a lot of time and effort and energy and don't happen to have like a lot of 
de developed a lot of other skills because they've invested so much time and energy. I, I understand that they need to make a living at some point to, to come to kind of pay their rent and their food. But I'm also torn because I feel that way. Like I feel that that it's not right. So, yeah. Yeah, but again, Catherine, I understand, Catherine. Um, but again, you know, if if our intentions are pure and if you understand the core of the reality of it, uh, we God would provide. They 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 can they can uh, pray for God to help them to get an income somehow, even if they don't have a qualification. They can make an income somehow doing something <clears throat> else. If it wasn't for the mediumship, which doesn't belong to them, they would. They would survive somewhere, somehow, like making some money somewhere else. So and and also, okay, you dedicate so much time that you don't have time to work. That's wrong. Yes, we need to devote as much time as possible, but we need to be realistic, right? It's the same thing with the prayers we read in other uh, previous chapters, like, uh, and I think the on the uh, Book of Spirits, uh, they explore, uh, they develop this idea even more. God does not want us to have a secluded life. Like people that go, for example, to a, a, a mosque, I don't know how it's called, uh, those places that they, they stay isolated just to pray, right? Many, many different religions have this kind of practice. Um, God does, want, does not want this for us. This is, this is not helping us or anybody else to grow. This is not our purpose here. And it's the same thing as dedicating 100% of our times of, to mediumship and then not having other ways to make an income to support ourselves and our families. This is wrong. Because that's not real life, right? Um, we need to be grounded. We need to be responsible. We need to be in the world, living, you know, because that's how we grow. If we live isolated and praying and just doing mediumship, life is good, isn't it? Life is good. We don't have a lot of those challenges that we have out there working, uh, dealing with co-workers, dealing with traffic, dealing with neighbors or family or <clears throat> uh, bosses and, you know, all sorts of things that we need to do in our daily lives. And that's what helps us grow. That's our real uh, task here in this life, to live in the real world and learn and evolve despite of everything or through everything because sometimes the, the, go, the things we go in life are trials are ways that through which we can grow spiritually we can prove it, we can learn different things or we can prove that we learned through the practice it's that it's like those quizzes or exams right that we do in school Okay, we read, we assimilated the, the things. Okay, I think I, I know now what this is about. And then we do the exam to really prove that we really learned. And the exams are the, the difficulties that we face in our daily lives. Making money, paying bills, or dealing with family, dealing with neighbors, dealing with bosses, coworkers, or our own health, traffic, whatever it is. Those are the opportunities that we have to prove that we have learned and we grow or true opportunities to learn. Uh, Francis have raised the hand, so sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna add something. I'm just thinking about like the money thing. It makes me uncomfortable if I, in the past, sometimes I did some, some reading for people. But personally, it makes me uncomfortable to ask for money. And I don't know why, but I don't mind to pay to get a minute to get a reading I have no problem with that so it's just weird but at the same time i compare that as doctors you know, people study a lot to be doctors they get paid a lot more money and and then if we study that that subject learn and you know we pay for classes i think i feel like it's a 
it's okay to get money back, ask money for money back. But it's this two way to see that. I can see, yeah, like it's just, I don't know, there's good media out, medium out there that charge a lot of money, but they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, but again, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. We can do good and bad at the same time, and one knows the other if we, you know, we, we have all situations like this all the time. Right? Yeah. Um, so. and the difference between a doctor, like you mentioned, and a medium or uh, a spiritual person is that his task is he, his or hers, is a knowledge and is a skill that was developed. Mediumship, yes, we can develop our, our, our skills, quote unquote, but it doesn't happen without the spirits. For sure. The doctor doesn't depend on anybody else to do his job. It's all about his knowledge and his own experience. Mm. It's a different thing. Like mediumship, we depend on the whole team of spirits. They are the ones that are working. Not the interpretation, our... like we, we have to work on our interpretation. Like I, I can see, I see a bunch of picture in my head when the spirit comes and I, for me sometime, I just don't interpret it properly. And I just want to, uh, and we have to work on that. I have to work on that. And then I want to add to, you remember last week like when he says like, we don't control anything. It's so true. Uh, I did not ask for my other grandparents yeah. and they brought me, which I love both grandparents side, but they brought me the other side, which is fine. I didn't say anything to, I didn't want to make her feel bad, but mm -hmm. it's just to show like, like, yeah. you know, not because you asked for your parents or she asked for her own parents and they never came. Yeah. They don't care. They will do what they want to do. Exactly. Yeah. You don't control. They are the ones in charge. I hear a lot of time, I have heard a lot of time, teachers, uh, other mediums, uh, my teachers, uh, saying like, oh, the medium is the one that's in control. You're the one that needs to be in control. I have heard people firing, look at that, firing their guides. Oh, wow. Woo, woo. Yes, right? Talk, uh, talk about being comfortable. Yeah, so comfortable to yeah. hear that. So. I mean, is is that why? Why would they do that, Sandra? Because I think the guy, how? the guides are are not uh, strong enough, or they are not teaching them the, with the speed that they would like to, to learn, or they are not whatever. I heard all sorts of stuff. And I was advised by one of them to fire my guides. Like, what? Was like I was so shocked. And you know, but I mean, people really believe that they have this kind of power. Like, what? It's one thing is to like ourselves. It to is to have self esteem, to have self respect. Another thing is be delusional that we have any power in this universe. We are so small. Look at the universe, right? There's so many things we don't know even here and now, like both in a micro micro universe and in, 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 a, in, a, in a big uh, universe as well. Like the, the, you know, bacteria and virus and all those little things we don't know, the molecules and atoms, we, we learn a lot, but we don't know everything yet. And the universe, like, like we have, we know very few planets compared with what there is out there and how things work and how, you know, and let alone, things about spirituality, my God, it's like just outrageous. So we need to be humble, like humbleness is one of the qualities of spiritual development. We have learned that in the beginning of this book. Uh, why? Because I don't know if you have heard this from scientists, for example, people that are scientists, that they know a lot, they have studied a lot. The more we study, the more, the more we know that we don't know anything. We, we heard this from philosophers, from 
all the errors. We heard this from good scientists. The more we learn about things, the more we have an understanding that we don't know anything. And that's the same thing with spirituality. The more we develop ourselves, the more we have an understanding that we are very small and we don't have any power to, because we don't understand enough to make orders like that. Who's supposed to be our guides or who is supposed to, you know, we, we have, we are good mediums. What? We, we can polish ourselves. Yes, we can be better than we used to before, but we can never intend to, to say that we are good mediums ever because it's not ours. We put ourselves to be servants of the spirits. We are instruments of the spirits. And the, the, more, the more humble we are, the more we can serve and the more we can make a difference for people. The more powerful would be the healing that we can bring, the messages we can bring, because we, they, we become more pure and they can use us better. They can manifest themselves better through us, through a, the more we purify ourselves. So, I don't know what you guys think. I've never thought about it before, but um, well, in this spiritual church, of course, it's, you know, the evidence that if there is an afterlife, that's not like anything that's charged for, and that's just part of the belief and then I hadn't really thought about you know I do pay um, I have paid you know psychic medium to get a reading and I'd never thought about the um, I guess maybe that they do have other talents that they could use to get a job and that just be on the side but I don't know how how you do it for free exactly I don't know this is time consuming. Sorry. What's that? I was going to say that I don't understand because this time is worth some money at some point. If I use like a couple of hours of my day to give me you know, medium messages and stuff, at least I'm rich and I'm okay. Well, I guess what? I need to make money too. So that's why I'm confused. Like I said, I'm, I'm torn. I, I get it, but I'm torn both both sides. So. Yeah, so if you don't have the means to devote all that time and pay your bills and make have another activity to pay your bills, then do less. Do less. Mediumship is not a career and should never be. I have two jobs. I work 90 hours a week in my other jobs. And I don't charge for anything I do in mediumship or spirituality. And I grow a lot with it. I grow a lot. It's my gain. Because the price, the, what we gain is our growth, which is priceless. That's what we're going to take to the other side. It's not money, right? And, and that's, so it's the same thing. It's like, would you charge your kid for taking care of them? Yes. Would you charge your kid? <laughs> <laughs> I know you wouldn't. Would you They're allowed. Would you charge your mother, your parents, your elderly mother, parents for taking care of them? No. It's the same kind of love and understanding that we need to have when we do mediumship or prayers. Is based on love and if you can't devote that much time because you need to pay your bills which is totally understand we all do we need to eat and pay bills and all the stuff then devote less time that's why i just do two hours a week of mediumship here with you guys because that's all i have the rest of the day the rest of my week i work to make money I still help people, 
But then it's a skill that doesn't involve spirituality. I went to school and I have a skill. Then it's a profession. That's how I, I pay my bills. I do have to set the record straight here. It's more like three hours a week. And then that yeah. adds up to your nine, 90 hours work week. And that's, right. that's pretty intense. I would advise you to not do that much. <laughs> <laughs> but um but I I do like I I do understand your point and I do feel like that like I don't think I would ever charge for mediumship just because I feel like it's a side thing like I feel like it's a side not not a hobby but interests like a special interest and I would never like I don't think that spirituality and ego go well together I think that's what they're trying to say And I think that's what is confronting for me is that most good mediums, especially except a few, a few unicorns out there are, are pretty ego driven, you know, like they, 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 they have this magnified sense of self. And, and I agree with you, that's not okay. But at the same time, I'm a little bit like Francis on the subject that I, like, instead of going and seeing a lot of, like talking to a bunch of, of, you know, mediums that wouldn't charge, there's not a lot of good ones that would allow that, it's, except if you end up in like a mediumship development circle like we are right now. And, but I mean, for people who don't believe in that stuff, which is like 97% of the population, uh, having the opportunity to meet with a good medium that is unpaid, virtually non-existent. Go to Brazil. When I <laughs> in Brazil, yes, serious, I'm serious. Everybody there, nobody charges, nobody. There's whole institutions, all based on donation. And that's that's fine. I think that's the best way. I think that's the way to go, donations. But it, like it, you yeah. should only feel uh, compelled to give if the what you receive was meaningful, and if you feel like like you do it out of a good heart and because you feel like it mm -hmm. yeah but yeah but it's yeah it's definitely not what's out there right now anyways the place i used to go uh one of the places i used to go in sao paulo uh it was have started uh, founded by uh three doctors three medical doctors and they were also mediums So they had their jobs in hospitals. They are really good doctors, very well-renowned doctors. And uh, interestingly, like one of them were um, atheist, the and the other two were um, Jewish. Um, and they they felt the call to start that. So they started this thing, the institution, whatever they called. Um, in in a little shed in the middle of nowhere because they didn't have a place uh and they used to go uh i think one night a week i think was thursday night evening they after their job they would go there and work doing healing and mediumship uh all the way through like 10 p.m or 11 and then the whole weekend the whole they start they used to start 6 a.m in the morning and would go all the way to 8 p.m doing healing and spiritual surgeries uh, not not invasive but the the job that they made was phenomenal they still do actually they they grew a lot uh it's phenomenal i Like I have a friend who was healed by metastatic cancer. Uh, I was healed from problems that the doctors, I don't want to reveal, but it was like very bad too. Uh, you know, and they, as they would heal your body, they would give the message that it was all trans mediumship. They were in trance the whole time 
and the spirits were saying stuff to you. So you, you have this problem because of this and this and that. It's like helping us to understand in our daily lives, in our journey, spiritual journey, what those problems meant. And even though they were healing us, they were giving us the recipe for, okay, now you need to do this and this and that uh, with your family, with your mom. You need to, you know, work on those kind of things in your personality and, you know, in order to maintain and to learn with that incident, with that problem. They 100% free, 100%. You know, so and then because people heard what they are doing and the all the, the, the wonderful things that they were doing, like there was a guy who were a corporate guy who had a school that uh, a huge building in a, uh, that was once a school. And he said, listen, the, he found these guys. They were not related, uh, but they found they heard about the, what they're doing they found their number they called them and said listen i heard about what you have done i have this building uh you know that i'm not using i would like to don't uh, allow you guys to they didn't give the building but they allowed for a number uh, a number of years for you, to, you guys to use for free uh, to do this this work so they moved. Now it's like a huge place. Uh, they have several uh, rooms. So they spend the work. They do like uh, they have a lot of groups of volunteers to do all sorts of stuff to collect food and deliver to the homeless. They they uh, make they have a, a geriatric factory. A diaper factory. They make diapers to donate to people that cannot pay as well. So they have all sorts of different different uh, things because they have more room now. So uh, when, when we understand what we are doing and that the, what we are doing is spiritual and is a mission, it's not a job, what we do is much more powerful. And for us, it's healing for us and we can you know, people can do more. So it is possible. That's why, like I, I lived this my whole life before I moved here, seeing those kind of stuff. So how do you feel that, like after that, maybe we can move on, but how do you feel that psychic is different than mediumship in that sense? Like, you mean like people who read tarot cards and the... And, yeah. uh, and stuff like that because the intent is different the intent is not necessarily to connect with the other side well people do whatever they want to do um uh i don't see any difference if they are really spiritual they should not charge either but if there is is a career they they want to explore if they they do this based on their skills, their their psychic skills, which doesn't involve spirits, is their skills. The same way as any other. Like playing tarot is not the same as mediumship, even though we can combine. We can use psychic skills in our uh, mediumship, but it's not, it's not the same because one involves only your own talents and the other one involves spirits that's make makes all the difference okay so it's a very controversial team i totally understand and i'm not condemning anyone not here to judge anyone i'm just sharing what we have read read and what i believe as well and what I experienced seeing other mediums that don't charge and uh, that's all. But everybody responds for themselves uh, and uh, who am I to judge, right? Um, is a very important thing to emphasize because we, nobody else is talking about this, right? <laughs> 
nobody else is uh, has this kind of understanding so just uh, you know is important for us for our own sake you know for the sake of us as mediums uh, so it's important for us to have this kind of understanding that we are instruments we are just doing something that doesn't belong to us we whatever we deliver is not us it's not that we are good prayers or good mediums we become good prayers or mediums the more we become humble and understand that everything comes from god and from spirits not from us that's our power to to be humble instruments of the spiritual world all right so let's uh, do our final prayer uh, dear God thank you for this opportunity to be here together thank you for the lives of everyone in here um, help us to continue to grow in our journey in our individual journey and also as a, a group as in collectively as well help us to um, be instruments of the spiritual world to grow and to understand the magnificence of your power and the power of spirits and understand that we are mere instruments and humble instruments of your uh, your gifts um, help us to overcome our obstacles help us to bring healing around us and in your own lives as well because we are still growing uh, spiritually uh, and help us to understand the things we need to do uh, through, uh, in every day, in every moment of our lives. Uh, thank you very much for your unconditional love and your support and your uplifting, even when sometimes we are not vibrating in a best vibration, very uh, good frequencies, spiritually speaking. You still show your unconditional love and you uplift us and you help us to grow and to overcome the obstacles in our daily lives. Help please our planet and humanity who are, is going through such turmoil. Help us to heal ourselves as humanity. Help us to understand what is really meaningful in life. Help us to co exist with each other with respect love and harmony and help us to be instruments of this healing to those around us and to uh, our planet collectively thank you very much and continue with us throughout this week amen all right so um uh, for those who are watching us from home, uh, everybody's welcome to participate. Um, if you would like to participate in our live uh, groups, uh, you're welcome to contact me uh, through our page on Revenant on Facebook or my website, revenant.world. And uh, the, our group is free of charge and uh, everybody's welcome to join us. We are reading the Gospel according with Spiritism and studying, and um, we are welcome to join us. So we meet every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, and I look forward to have you with us. I'll see you next week. Bye.